These are the 14 strongest characters in One Piece whose true powers are still unexplained. Starting with Monkey D. Dragon. This mysterious man is the absent father of Luffy and the leader of the Revolutionary Army. His stated goal is to take down the corrupt world nobles who rule the entire world. And while we've never seen him fight, whenever he shows up, strange things always happen. For instance, when he appeared in Loke Town in Chapter 100, Luffy was saved by a freak lightning storm that apparently arrived out of nowhere. Or in the Goa Kingdom, strong winds saved citizens from a raging fire when Dragon arrived on the islands. And these examples have led many to speculate that Dragon has a devil fruit or an ancient weapon that can control the weather. What a power to have in this world that is completely covered with water. We also know that Luffy gets his unbreakable will and his hockey from Dragon as well. And on top of that, he's also the most wanted man in the world and judging by the rest of his family, Dragon should be one of the most powerful characters in the story. However, at the same time, there's also some evidence that Dragon may not be as strong as many people think he is. For example, Blackbeard was able to destroy the base of the Revolutionary Army and while Dragon and the Revolutionaries easily survived, it makes me wonder how strong Dragon actually is. But while we can possibly question Dragon's strength, one undeniable powerhouse in Luffy's family is his grandfather, Monkey D. Garp. As the hero of the Marines, Garp is a famous retired Vice Admiral who was the rival and friend of former Pirate King Goldie Roger. He's respected by literally every single Marine in existence and was even offered the position of Admiral many, many times, though he always turned it down. He's even capable of defeating Yonko-level characters like we see in the special chapter strong worlds. In this special chapter, he and former fleet admiral Sengoku take down Shiki, who was Roger's main pirate rival and a member of the Rocks crew. But what have we actually seen from Garp so far? While we've never really seen him fight all out, we do know that he has ridiculous physical strength. He throws cannonballs like bullets, brawls with his fists, and has top tier hockey. And while he did not participate during the Ward Marine Ford, Garp certainly felt capable of killing a Kainu after after his bloodthirsty admiral punched a hole through Ace. But is he really one of the strongest characters alive? Well, in the past we know that he rivaled people like Whitebeard and even teamed up with Roger to take down Rox Dizebeck probably the most powerful pirate in history. But if he's really on that type of level, do we really believe that he is just throwing fists with all these top tier fighters? I mean, every other elite fighter in the series uses some sort of weapon or ability, a sword, a gun, or a devil fruit, but we haven't seen Garb use any of these. Surely he won't just chuck cannonballs at enemies like Roger or Blackbeard. So is he actually hiding a secret ability or is he just the greatest hockey master in all of One Piece? And what if I told you that Garb was probably not even the strongest Marine out there? One character whose powers are a complete mystery is the world government commander in chief, Kong. But just look at this absolute Chad of a man. Who would want to step up to this dude in a fight. Even though we don't know his individual fighting strength, we do know that he controls the marines and cypher pole. And since marines are usually promoted based on fighting ability, Kong must have had incredible powers since he was the fleet admiral before Sengoku and Akainu. And there is a likely explanation for why Oda is keeping his abilities a mystery. You see, he could very easily be one of the final opponents the Straw Hats face on their journey and we will learn more about his powers in the final battles hats. And speaking of the Straw Hats, there have always been many questions about Zoro and Sanji's true abilities as well. Like does Zoro's unrelenting drive to be the strongest swordsman in the world mean he will unlock Congress hockey? And how exactly can Sanji light his legs on fire? Well during the Wano arc, we finally got answers to both of these questions. After Zoro cuts Kaido deep enough to leave a scar, the Yonko himself tells us that Zoro just attacked using Congress hockey. No other confirmation needed. And as for Sanji, it turns out that he has genetically modified genes. These genes are from an almost extinct race of sky people that have the ability to create fire at will. And now that we finally fully know how these unique abilities work, it hopefully won't be long until Zoro and Sanji reach the level of the rest of the characters on this list. And one of these characters that we also just learned a whole lot more about is Shanks. What we've long known is that as a child, Shanks was a cat 
cabin boy on Roger's crew. And before losing his arm, he could duel evenly with the strongest swordsman in the world. He even stopped the entire war at Marineford without even fighting. And in the most insane Conqueror's hockey flex in the entire story so far, he made a literal admiral run away crying from miles away. But it gets even more insane thanks to the information in the booklet released with One Piece film Reds. Because in it we learn that Shanks can coat his sword in a fiery aura similar to Luffy's Red Hog attack. Also, Shanks' nickname in battle is the Killer of Observation Hockey, meaning that he can even stop other strong characters like Luffy from using their future side ability using his own hockey. Mind blowing. Truly, Shanks is the definition of a badass character, and he is going to show Luffy that there is still much, much more to learn about hockey. But despite all of this new information, there is still so much about his powers and goals that we don't know. What we know for sure is that he didn't have a devil fruit at the start of the series, but it is possible that he ate one between chapter 1 and becoming a Yonko. Besides his fighting skills, he has the clout to drink booze with Whitebeard, the influence to stop Kaido from coming to Marine Force, and the swagger to walk into Marijoa to chat with the actual Gorosei. Also, it is possible that he could be a world noble or even something more crazy like the son of Rox de Zebek. Whatever the truth is, we should find out soon as he's finally going to take an active role in the search for the One Piece now. And very similar to Shanks, another pirate searching for the legendary treasure is Blackbeard. This man is also a Yonko, one of the most dangerous pirates in the seas and is Luffy's main rival to becoming Pirate King. But the most mysterious thing about him are his devil fruit powers. That's right, I said powers. By some unexplained process, Blackbeard can use both the darkness fruit, a power that is a whole mystery by itself, and the tremor fruit, which is said to have the ability to destroy the entire world. So what do we know about this hidden ability that allows Blackbeard to have multiple devil fruits at once? Well, some of the the theories I've covered in other videos range from the original Devil Fruit being the three-headed dog Cerberus, or a mythical octopus, him having a godlike fruit just like Luffy, or even Blackbeard being triplets that are stuck in the same body. Each of these theories tries to explain how it was able to eat a second Devil Fruit, and many wonder if he will even eat a third one before he finally fights Luffy. Plus, we still don't know if Blackbeard also has Conqueror's Hockey. But one thing we do know for sure is that he has horrible taste in pies and drinks, at least according to Luffy. But perhaps Blackbeard's most important secret is his connection to the legendary pirate Rox de Zebek as well. Blackbeard could be Rox's son just like Shanks, his clone, or even somehow have Rox living inside of his body. <laughs> Hold on, what? One of the strongest pirates ever living inside of another pirate? That's right. In One Piece, anything is possible. Rox de Zebek is surrounded with so much mystery that we're dying to find out what happened to him and, more importantly, how he became so powerful. What we do know is that Rox was an infamous pirate 40 years ago and that his goal was to become king of the world. To do that, he ruled over the most insane pirate crew ever and was only stopped when Garp and Roger teamed up during the incident on God Valley. However, the island where this famous battle occurred was erased from history and we've never had confirmation of Rox's death or his power. But if it took the Marines, Garb and Roger to defeat Rox then he must have been a monstrous fighter. Many theories point to him being the former user of Blackbeard's Darkness Fruit or another overpowered Devil Fruit user such as the Lightning Fruit. Whatever it was, if his goal was to conquer the world then he surely would have possessed one of the strongest fruits in history and incredibly strong will and hockey on top of it. Another Another participant in the famous God Valley battle was the Dark King Rayleigh. Rayleigh was Roger's former vice captain and is said to be nearly as strong as the former pirate king himself. He is one of the most powerful swordsmen in the series. He can easily go head to head with a marine admiral and he's a master of all forms of hockey. We also know that Rayleigh doesn't have a devil fruit as he's been shown swimming multiple times which makes his powers even more impressive. And so you might be wondering why he is in this video. Well, 
he's one of the few living people who have been to Love Tale, and it makes me wonder if he's hiding some other unknown ability that we have yet to see in the series. And of course, you can't talk about Rayleigh without discussing Roger, the former Pirate King and the man who kicked off the Great Pirate Era. Roger is undoubtedly one of the strongest One Piece characters ever. We do know that he also was a master swordsman who wielded one of only 12 existing supreme great swords. He was definitely not a devil fruit user, but there have been many other strange occurrences when we see him in battle. For example, in his fight against Cheeky, a sudden storm saves the Roger pirates from certain death. Sound familiar? And just like Luffy, Roger is one of the very few characters to have the voice of all things, a power that is still completely unexplained. Roger could also have had hockey abilities a level above anything that we've seen in the story so far, very similar to Shanks. And there's also this giant egg on Roger's ship that has never been explained so far in the story. Seriously. What is this thing? An ancient weapon? A mythical creature? We just don't know, but whatever this is, it is just one more mystery surrounding the full powers of the former Pirate King and what exactly he found so funny on Love Tale. And while we still don't know what Roger found there, we can guess that it was something that Emu wants to have erased from history. The secret ruler of the world has appeared in just 18 panels in the entire story and has never said a single word. We don't even know if they're a man or a woman, but every time they do appear, we get world-changing events. We do know for a fact that the Gorosei take direct orders from Emu. They sit on the empty throne, which we were told no one is supposed to sit in, and we're led to believe that they can order the destruction of entire islands. But despite Emu's limited panels, they are clearly set up to be one of the main antagonists of the Straw Hat Pirates that they will have to face before the end of the story. And so we really have to ask ourselves what their true powers may be. Do they control an ancient weapon? Do they have a super overpowered devil fruit? Can their observation hockey span the entire world? Like, what is the deal with the giant straw hat in the freezer? And most importantly, maybe just how long has Emu been alive? Because it is very plausible that Emu has lived ever since the Void Century, secretly pulling the strings of the world to keep themselves alive and in power. I know that at least I can't wait to find out all the answers to all of Emu's mysteries. And while Emu is likely one of the final villains, the Gorosei themselves seem to be the next world government's opponents that the Straw Hats will have to face as well. These five elders rule the world government for Emu. They have complete control over the marines and cipher pole and technology developed by the genius scientist Dr. Vegapunk. And they're willing to have entire islands destroyed to protect their deep deepest secrets, though at least some of them show remorse over doing so. And while we don't know if they've been alive for as long as Emu, they are certainly not your average world noble. Despite never seeing them fight, it is likely that each of these men are unafraid of battle. Many show scars and one even carries what is likely a cursed blade. As a group, they were not concerned at all about being in the presence of Shanks without any guards to protect them. Plus, they also felt perfectly safe bossing around Akainu and no one in their right mind does that if they can't defend themselves. In fact, this guy right here, who we now know is called Saint Saturn, had no problem heading straight into battle, and Kizaru showed him an uncommon amount of respect. Truly, we don't know what the Gorosei are capable of, but get ready because some of the answers for this are likely coming very soon. And now one character that the Gorosei definitely want to eliminate is the smartest man in the world, Dr. Vegapunk. In the current arc, we learned that Vegapunk has studied the Void Century. This is a blank 100 year time period in history from 800 years ago, and since Vegapunk has been studying it, that means he likely knows all the information about the Ancient Kingdom and its incredible technology. But it also means that the government is actively trying to kill him. And while the powers from his brain devil fruit don't have that much use in actual battle, Vegapunk's inventions certainly make him one of the most dangerous characters in the world. For example, just two of these new Seraphim that he created are capable of making even a Yonko hesitate. And Vegapunk has even successfully recreated actual Devil Fruits. Such an insane ability. Imagine more lightning users, more dragons, or even more Karibus. Wait, no. 
please, no more caribous. Plus, it's very likely we still haven't seen everything that Vegapunk is even capable of. If he really was that close to uncovering the secrets of the Ancient Kingdom technology, then the world is truly about to change. And one character in particular that Vegapunk likely has learned a lot about is the mysterious Joy Boy. In chapter 628, we learned that Joy Boy was a person from the Void Century who was also part and maybe even king of the legendary Ancient Kingdom. And while it is likely that Joy Boy was once an actual person, it seems that his name has become more of a title over time. We know this because when Luffy awakened the sun god Nika fruit, Zunisha, this giant walking elephant with a whole island on her back, announced that Joy Boy has returned. And so while Luffy was bouncing around with his insane new powers, we don't know exactly how this made him Joy Boy or how he connects to the person from the Void Century. In general, not much is known about the actual powers of that past Joy Boy, but we can assume that this person also possessed the Nika fruit, and it was their role to bring freedom and joy to the world. This Joy Boy from the past probably also had access to some incredible technology, and we recently have learned that the Void Century was a time of great technological advancements that the world today is still trying to catch up to. Also, Joy Boy likely could have used the the ancient weapons. One of them could have been used to command Zanisha, and if he really had all these powers, then we really have to wonder how he and the ancient kingdom ever lost to the world government 800 years ago. However, Ichiro Oda, the author of One Piece, has left us a lot of clues that we can use to learn more about this mysterious figure, the battle during the Void Century, and how the knowledge that Joy Boy left behind will change the One Piece world forever. And so everything that we know about Joy Boy, I explain in this video that you can watch right here. Thanks for watching.